please subscribe math.com for any query, comment or email. Hello everyone. Today we will discuss the different types of matrices and the easiest way to remember the so many types of the matrices. Basically, the matrices are not divided in this in, in any categories. We, we came across different types of the matrices just. We came to know that they are uh, that there is a matrix, uh, null matrix or uh, there is a row matrix or col column matrix, but they are not categorized under a specific category. So for our ease, we have divided the matrices or the types of matrices in two types, type 1 and type 2, so that you can easily remember them. Type 1 matrices are the type of matrices that are categorized based on the number of rows and columns and operations on them. Okay, this is the type 1 matrices. So all those matrices will come under the umbrella of type 1 matrices where the operation, uh, where the where they are categorized either on the number of rows and columns or the operations on number on rows and columns okay we will see later what are these type 2 matrices are the type of matrices that are categorized based on the number of elements or entries of matrices and operations on them okay so these are the two major types of matrices that we have for your ease so that you can easily remember them basically in maths it has no uh, there is no connection of these two type 1 and type 2 in maths but we have done this only to, to memorize the so many types of matrices. Let's see which matrices come under the umbrella of type 1 and which matrices come under the umbrella of type 2. So type 1 matrices include row matrix. We will discuss one by one later. Column matrix, rectangular matrix, square matrix, transpose of a matrix, symmetric matrix and skews matrix, matrix. So these are the matrices that come under the umbrella of type 1 as they are categorized on the basis of number of rows and columns and the operations on them. Now let's see what are the matrices that come under the umbrella of type 2 that are null or zero matrix it will be easier for you to remember them all negative of a matrix diagonal matrix scalar matrix and identity matrix so these are the basic types of the matrices that come under the category of type 1 and type 2 based on the different conditions okay now we will discuss both these types in the form of a table so you can memorize so many types and the types come on your fingertips. Let's make a table. Uh, firstly, we will make the table of type 1 matrices and we'll discuss them one by one. You will feel that you, it will become easier for you to remember them all by using this technique. Okay, so we will make a table like this. So here is the table of the type 1 matrices. We will start with the uh, uh, with discussing the first matrix that is the row matrix of type 1. Type one. The condition that is required for a matrix to be row matrix is it must have one row in it and the column can be any number means any number of column. This is the condition for a matrix to be row matrix. Okay. Then example is if you are given with the matrix like this. This is a row matrix. Why? Because the number of rows here is 1. And the columns are three, so column can be any, and the uh, and the row row must be one for the row matrix. Okay, we can take another example. This is also a row matrix because there is only one row, and the um, columns are two. It means the col columns can vary, but the rows must be one. Next type of matrix is the column matrix. As its name indicates, the condition must be one column. Okay, and the any number of rows will make the matrix a column matrix. You are given with a matrix like this. This is a column matrix. With the order of this matrix is 2 into 1 because there are 2 rows and 1 column. Okay. So we can take one more example as again here the rows are um, 2 and the columns are 1. So the order is 2 into 1. So the matrices like this are called the column matrices. Okay. The next type of the matrix is the rectangular matrix. The condition that is required is the number of rows must not be equal to the number of columns. Okay. When the number of rows of a matrix is not equal to the number of columns, 
it will be considered as a rectangular matrix okay so this is the condition let's see what is the example of a rectangular matrix we have now it is clear from here that this is a rectangular matrix because the order of this matrix is 2 by 3 and there it means that 2 and 3 are not equal 2 is the number of rows and 3 is the number of columns so when the number of rows are not equal to the number of columns then the given matrix will be a rectangular matrix the next type of the matrix it is a square matrix what is the condition that is required for a square matrix it is opposite to the rectangular matrix in which the number of rows were not equal to number of columns here the number of rows must be equal to the number of columns it means if this condition is not satisfied the given matrix will be rectangular and if it is satisfied the given matrix will be square matrix so the example of the square matrix is this is a square matrix because there are two rows and two columns so this is the order of the matrix when the rows number of rows equals to the number of columns then the given matrix will be square matrix okay next type of matrix that will come under the type 1 matrices is the transpose of matrix it is the operation on the rows and columns that's why we have put this matrix under type 1 so transpose of a matrix is basically the operation on rows and columns how for that we change either rows into columns or columns into rows okay so there is a condition of or whether we will change rows into columns or columns into rows in transpose the order also reverses if before taking the transpose the order was 2 into 3 after taking the transpose it will become 3 into 2 okay and it is denoted by a this to power t okay so the example of the transpose of a matrix is if you have given with a matrix as 2 3 4 5 and it's, if you want to take its transpose what you will do you will either convert the rows into columns or columns into rows we will convert here the rows into columns so it will become we will change this row into column 2 4 and this row into column 3 5 so this is how we can take the transpose of a matrix okay the next type of matrix that we will discuss is the symmetric matrix symmetric matrix is categorized under type 1 because we have to apply the operation on its on the rows and columns but how let's see what is the condition that is required for a matrix to be symmetric first condition is the given matrix should be a square matrix and then next is when we apply the transpose on a matrix we will get the matrix the original matrix again this is the second condition let's apply on example so that you can easily understand that how it is possible example is when we take its transpose what we will get we will get the same matrix as that of the original one it means the transpose is not affecting at all the uh, original matrix it means when we have a matrix that is a square matrix and its transpose will give you the original matrix again you will call it a symmetric matrix okay okay the last type of the type 1 matrices is the skew symmetric matrix let's see what is skew symmetric matrix the condition required for a matrix to be skew symmetric the first is the the matrix must be a square matrix means the rows and columns must be equal to each other okay and the next condition that is required for the condition to be skew for the uh, matrix to be skew symmetric is when we take the transpose of a matrix is when we take the transpose of a matrix it will give you with the result when we take a negative of a matrix we will discuss the negative of a matrix in the type 2 matrices but for the time being you just understand that if you are given with a matrix and you take its transpose its answer will match to the matrix when you take when you multiply the given matrix with minus 1 or with the scalar of minus 1 let's see how we will apply it on an example if you are given with a square matrix that is 0 minus 2 2 and 0 okay and you are going to take its transpose what you will get transpose will be 0 2 minus 2 0 as we change rows into columns and columns into rows and if we take minus a minus a means you will multiply minus with every element of a 
you will minus it will become minus 2 minus 2 will become 2 and 0 will be as it is it means that the condition is going to be satisfied because a transpose is equals to minus a when this happened then we call the given matrix is a skew symmetric matrix. Uh, let's discuss the type 2 matrices. So this is the table of the type 2 matrices. Type 2 matrices are, will be those, all those matrices where we will apply the operations on, on the elements of the, the matrices. First mat uh, type of matrices that came under the umbrella of type 2 matrices is the null or zero matrix. Now what is the condition that is required for a null or zero matrix? Uh, to be an uh, to be called as null matrix is all elements or entries are, must be equal to zero. Okay, then it will be called as uh, the null or zero matrix, and it is denoted by O. Okay, so let's write it in example. That what is a null matrix? O is the representation of a null matrix, and how it is uh, written as all the elements of the matrix equal to zero will give you a null or zero matrix okay and it can be of any order we cannot restrict here the order okay the next type of matrix that come under this umbrella is the negative of a matrix okay as its name indicate negative of a matrix means wh when we invert the all the elements of the matrix okay negative of it means we are applying the operation here so here the operation on the elements of the matrix that that's why we put this type under the type 2 matrices okay but we will do in negative of a matrix we will invert sign of all elements it means if the sign is positive it becomes negative and if there is negative it becomes positive what is the example let's have we uh, have an example a is equals to 2 1 2 1 this is a matrix and what will be the the negative of a matrix negative of a matrix will be minus a and we will get as minus 2 minus 2 minus 1 minus 1 that means we have inverted the sign of all the elements okay the next type of matrix that will fall under this category is the diagonal matrix. okay for a matrix to be a di diagonal matrix the condition that is required is it must be a square matrix and the second condition that is required is any one element of the diagonal should not be zero see it in the example if you are feeling it difficult any one element of diagonal not zero and the non diagonal entries must be zero it means the entries that are not in diagonal must be zero zero okay so these are the three conditions that are required for a diagonal matrix to be called as a diagonal matrix let's see what is a diagonal matrix with through an example if you have a matrix like this then this matrix is called a diagonal matrix because first thing is this is a square matrix because the number of rows are equal to the number of columns okay then the second condition is as it is 3 into 3 matrix okay and the second condition is any one element of the diagonal not zero it means that this element is not zero so it is also satisfied and the third condition is non-diagonal entries must be zero the all the entries that are not in diagonal are zero so this is a diagonal matrix okay one more example can be considered as 3 0 0 3 so this is a 2 into 2 matrix so one condition is satisfied as it is a square matrix now in diagonal any one element should be not zero uh, as there are two elements that are not zero so it is also satisfied and the non-diagonal entries are zero it is also satisfied all the three conditions are satisfied it means that the uh, that the matrix b is also a diagonal matrix now we move towards the remaining two types of uh, matrices so the next type of matrix is scalar matrix a matrix will be scalar if it satisfied which condition let's see Condition 1 is the matrix must be diagonal. If the matrix is diagonal matrix, what is a diagonal matrix we have seen earlier? Okay. If, a, if first condition is the matrix must be diagonal matrix, then all diagonal entries same and non-zero is the second condition. This is the second condition of the scalar matrix. Okay. So, this uh, these are the only two conditions. Uh, that are required for the matrix to be scalar what is the example let's see the example is you are given with the matrix like like this 
then this is called a scalar matrix. Why? The first condition it is a diagonal matrix because all the entries other than the diagonal are zero and the all diagonal entries are same and are non-zero. That's why it is called a scalar matrix. Okay, one more example can be three, zero, zero and three. This is also called a scalar matrix. Okay, the last type of matrix that is left is identity matrix. This is a very important matrix that we will came across in most of the matrix operations. Okay, so identity matrix, uh, what is the condition that is required for the identity matrix? First condition, it must be a diagonal matrix. Okay, and the second condition is all diagonal en entries must be one. All okay. This is these are the two conditions that are required for a uh, matrix to be identity matrix. Let's see its example. This is an identity matrix of uh, order two into two. Another identity matrix example is this is another identity matrix. So it was all about the different types of matrices. How you can define them, what are their examples and how you can memorize them easily by dividing them into two categories and, uh, then, and then you can easily memorize them.